Hello! In today's Arkeo Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one comes from the west coast of Ireland, uh, at a place called Connemara. And now I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, because it seems that Welsh uh, place names are nothing like Irish place names. Why would they be? They're different languages. But um, I have a particular problem with them. Uh, anyway, Connemara and uh, a local resident called Elizabeth Moylan uh, discovered two stone axes. Uh, one dating to around 5,000 years ago. Uh, these axes have been uh, washed up because of stormy weather, and you may recall uh, recently we um, uh, heard from the uh, Sharp Project up in St Andrews, who um, have a similar uh, problem and also a similar opportunity, in so much as the stormy weather in Scotland has really churned up the coastline uh, there, and in this case uh, two stone axes have been revealed. Now what this one of them, this one that the oldest of the two, uh, was confirmed by a local archaeologist as being pre-farming, it comes from the Mesolithic era, and um, it may have been hafted to a, a wooden handle or a deer antler, and is actually the most westerly example of several um, uh, similar objects um, uh, found in the Galway Bay region. So uh, it's a wonderful find, it's a, it's a find that extends the, the extent of that particular artefact, and it was found because of storms. So uh, if you do uh, live there, or indeed if you do live in the region covered by um, the Shark Project, um, definitely do go for a walk, see what you might find. Now, um, ironically though, the storm has both given, given rather, and taken away. Um, it seems that um, uh, axe-making sites have been actually washed into the sea due to recent storms in recent years as well. So, as much as this archaeology is being uh, churned up and is being, um, being made uh, very obvious to people walking along, it also means it's, it's, it is in danger of being lost. So this is why you need to be vigilant if you can be. Anyway, a very exciting story, and as I said in the uh, the Sharp video, uh, interview video, um, uh, you could be walking your dog and make an important discovery. So why not get out and have a look? That's headline number one. Headline number two actually comes from uh, Baghdad, where um, just over a year after the uh, the invasion uh, of of Iraq by U.S. led forces. Uh, the Baghdad Museum uh, is finally ready to reopen. Um, it was subject to terrible looting, in fact, uh, an infamous um, spate of looting um, which occurred in that tumultuous time. And um, a combination of restored and returned artefacts are now on display uh, for the first time since 2003. The museum is open to visitors who will get uh, special permits at the moment, usually students and academics, uh, also as well officials and foreign dignitaries, but uh, they could be ready to admit the general public as early as February or March. So that is great news. And as I say, a real, um, a real uh, bounce back for that museum because that, that that's, has been probably the most heinous instance of focus looting in uh, in modern times, actually, the Bag Baghdad Museum. Terrible. Anyway, it's great that they're reopened. That's headline number two. Headline number three is to do with grains of rice. Um, I just found this, this story interesting because it highlights, the, sort of, I suppose, the micro-focus of archaeology. You know, you can find monuments, you can find stone axe heads, but sometimes grains of rice are really important. And 11 grains of brown rice believed to date back to the early Yayoi period, around 2,600 to 2,400 years ago, um, were found last November uh, in a former pa uh, paddy in the Akitsu archaeological site at Goza Nara Prefecture. Um, yes, I'm saying all of that as though I don't know what I'm talking about because um, I'm terrified of pronouncing it wrong. But nonetheless, they were found it on this site. Um, a professor from the Kyoto, um, Kyoto University um, has uh, confirmed that this, this rice is very important because actually rice from this time is very rare and it's a real, wonderful opportunity to study the type of rice which was being cultivated by these ancient people. Uh, the rice were about four millimetres in length. Uh, they did not have husks. Husks can be very useful but these did not have husks on them. The grains are believed to have been so well preserved because they were sealed in by mud, they were um, uh, soaked in water and there was no oxygen around. So just like bog bodies uh, as we were talking about in a recent video, these, these rice grains survive because of that anoxic water environment. 
Um, it is rare to discover rice from this period, um, but also it's rare to have the opportunity to do a DNA analysis, and that's actually the next step in these studies. And uh, hopefully, um, the professor will be able to go on to actually uh, to, to confirm a bit more about, I suppose, the, the tra trajectory of rice cultivation in the in the region and at that time. So that's headline number three. I'd also like to highlight another headline in the, uh, in the other news stories that you can find in the video information, and that is with regards to ten rather scary instruments of, um, of the medical profession from history. It really highlights the fact that I don't want to really, I don't want to travel back in time for too long. If, you know, if, if a time, time machine's ever invented, I'll stay there for a bit and then, and then come back home, because some of these instruments are just terrifying. Anyway, do check out those news stories and also the headlines that I've just um, uh, had a look at in uh, the video information. They're there for your delectation and delight. Uh, take your time and enjoy them as ever. Uh, until next time, do take care. Uh, this weekend, Mrs. Soup and I are off to visit my brother down in Hampshire. Uh, he, uh, he lives and works in the south of England now, which is slightly uh, you know, unnerving. Nonetheless, we're going to be having a wonderful time visiting him and also going back to Oxford and having a, a nice day out. So uh, whatever you're doing, hopefully you'll have a lovely time as well. Uh, as ever, do take care. Bye-bye.